Up until now, the majority of the polymers we've talked about have been monopolymers, meaning there's just one repeat unit that gets repeated in a very predictable way over and over. That isn't always the case. You can have multiple um, polymers come together to form copolymers. So for example, let's come back to our example of a, the blue is like our carbon backbone that goes all the way along. We can have monomers along this backbone, right? In this case, we put the wheels. And then you could do a couple for a while and then you could switch to doing these red pieces, right? So this would be an example of a block copolymer because we did a certain number of one unit and then we switched and we did a different type of unit for a while, right? So there's different types of copolymers. They don't have to be block copolymers where you do them in blocks at the time. You can do them alternating, right? For example, here, let's say you've got mer units A and B. They could just be all A. That means just a regular polymer. But you could alternate. You've got A, B, A, B alternating along there. You could have uh, a random organization like in, in three. Here you've got a block copolymer where you're doing big blocks of them at a time. You could have a graft copolymer where the main line is A, but then it breaks off and forms these grafts of a different one. So there's lots and lots of different copolymer options. And copolymers are really great because they uh, just give you additional ways to tune your polymers. For example, in the field of floor polymers, um, again, floor polymers like Teflon, every one of these would be fluorines coming off the side. But maybe that doesn't give you the exact properties you want. Maybe you want it to be a little more chemically reactive. Well, then you could add something off the side, which is going to be a little more reactive, right? You could, you could change some of these side groups maybe for a stretch and then go back to Teflon, and that's done all the time. They mix it with PVDF, for example, and with other things. So that is the idea of block copolymers, and there's lots of really good examples of this. Um, SBR versus NBR styrene butadiene rubber versus acrylonitrile butadiene rubber have very different properties. Um, ABS. Here you've got SBR rubber versus NBR. You can see the styrene, right, part of this block copolymer right there. And you can see the acrylonitrile right there. So you can think of different rubbers and different polymers as having different building blocks that you can work with.